Hi, welcome to Top Chef University. I'm Arian from Top Chef New York. Course number three is all about cooking techniques, and this is your next lesson in poaching. I love poaching fruit, especially winter fruits. The flavor of a poached fruit improves with time and can keep for up to four days. You can serve it with a dollop of whipped cream, ice cream, or even rice pudding for an elegant dessert. Today we'll discuss what fruits work best, what to use for the poaching liquid, and what temperature will give you the best results. Let's get started. Poaching is a fantastic use for out of season or underripe fruits that are too hard or haven't developed enough of their natural sugars yet. The fruit is poached in water, wine, fruit juice, even spirits such as whiskey or rum, sweetened with a little bit of sugar. The sugar is necessary even when you're poaching ripe sweet fruits because without it, the poaching liquid will pull out the fruit's natural sugars. The liquid can also be flavored with spices such as cinnamon, cloves, or even vanilla. So today, we're gonna to be making a port wine poached pear. So let's get started. We're gonna start by putting together our poaching liquid. Again, you've learned about poaching. Now this is a sweet poaching liquid. We're gonna follow those same principles that we've learned. So here I have three cups of port wine, two cups of water, half a cup of sugar, two sticks of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of allspice, a teaspoon of vanilla, four cloves, and a tablespoon of honey. And also, for a little bit of citrus, let's add a little bit of uh, lemon zest to give it that tanginess. So I'm gonna add about four, four or five peelers strips of lemon. Let's give that a quick stir, get those flavors all incorporated nicely. Already the smells are coming together. So we're going to leave that here, let it come up to a quick boil, and then we're going to lower it to a simmer. Let's clean up, and then I'm going to show you how to get our pears ready. So we have our pears, and again, these are a little firm. That's why we're poaching them. So I find the best way is we're gonna peel them. Let's bring over our bowl here. We'll peel right into our garbage bowl. This way it makes cleanup real easy. So I just use downward strokes, long downward strokes. These are an Anjou pear that we're using, but you can also use a Bartlett is great. The Bosque pear tends to get a little soft, so you might want to stay away from them. It's nice to actually leave the stem on, too, for presentation purposes when it comes time to, to serve or when you're plating. Now I'm going to show you how to core them, taking the pits out. So I like to use a melon baller. I find it real easy. It's, um, it's a little safer than using a paring knife, and it can really get up into the whole core. So basically, you take the first one, because what it is is the seeds are actually in the center. I like to turn it over to the smaller side. One more time. Now I can actually see the pit, I'm getting to it. And then one more time. And you got the pits out. So there you have it. All right, now I see our poaching liquid has come up to a boil, so I just want to lower it a little bit because our pears are almost ready to go in, but not quite. So I'm just gonna lower it to the simmer, which we're looking for anyway. This way, all our flavors are incorporating. Oh my God, smells so good. All right, so one more time. And what's fun about this way that I'm coring the, um, the pears is, you know, you can get really creative and you can actually like stuff a crushed cookie up there when you're after they're poached, after you poach them and you're ready to serve them. All right. So these are ready to go in. Our flavors have really come together. The cloves, I can smell them. A lot of the flavors of, of our spices are, are releasing now. 
and we're going to gently place our poached pears in. Be careful not to cover yourself in red wine. All right. I'm just going to put the heat up a little bit. So now our pears are poaching and we're going to want them to simmer in here for about 10 to 12 minutes. And while they're doing, sometimes they tend to float on top, so we want to keep them submerged. So again, we have our parchment lid, which is really great. So you kind of just put that on top, get a little bit of the liquid on top. This will help keep your pears submerged in that poaching liquid. So now these are going to simmer in the poaching liquid for about 10 to 12 minutes. We're going to turn off the fire. We're going to let them steep in the same poaching liquid, almost cool down in its own liquid. This way it really infuses with all that poaching liquid and gets all those flavors inside. And you're going to see a rich, vibrant red color when we're done. So that's going to sit. And when we come back, we're going to make a delicious dessert for you. So our pears now have completely cooled down in their own poaching liquid. So let's check them out. Well, the smell is amazing. I can tell it's really, really infused. So let's take a peek. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at the color of that pear. Tell me that is not the most beautiful thing you've seen in a long time. That is gorgeous, gorgeous. So I'm just gonna get ready to plate this. Let's put it on our plate. See our little stem comes in handy there. So now we're gonna add some vanilla ice cream. It's a great combination, poached pear, vanilla ice cream. You can't go wrong with that. All right. All right. Just put that to the side. Now, what I did also was I took some of the poaching liquid and I actually reduced it to a syrup, which we're gonna add to the poached pear, which is really gonna add some great, great, great flavor. Look at that, oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. That is simply beautiful. Let's add some fresh mint. A little bit of powdered sugar. So there you have it, this beautifully poached port wine pear. So that was your last lesson on poaching. Hopefully you've learned a lot and we'll start adding this incredibly valuable technique to your repertoire. There are really endless possibilities only limited by what you're willing to try. In the next lesson we're turning up the heat because we're headed to the grill.